Now, you speak with such an amount of reassurance, uh, and having read your books, I know that uh, you have had a great personal uh, enlightenment. And thanks to this enlightenment, or illumination as you all so call it, you uh, are in a position where you indeed uh, can look into the future of events to come. Uh, could you tell me when this happened in your life and what kind of experience it was? I had an incredible experience in the 34th year of my life. And from that experience started a process of transformation in my body, which continues to this day. This transformation led me to a state of consciousness which I had never experienced before my 34th year. It is a strange experience. In the normal human being, one's personality is a small flame of consciousness or awareness. And seen from that small flame, the world appears to be a gigantic expanse of stars and planets, oceans, mountains, deserts and plains. But when this transformation of consciousness occurs, the whole picture is reversed. It is now the consciousness which becomes an ocean. It is now the consciousness which surpasses these suns and planets and mountains and oceans and plains and deserts. It is now consciousness that becomes the fundamental reality of the universe. And all that we see now with our sensible equipment is like an image projected on it. Consciousness now appears to be the basic reality, to be the universe in fact. And what we see, these material manifestations of the universe are but projections of this very consciousness. We can say like shadows, like phantoms, like a mirage floating on it. And this consciousness that uh, was developed uh, in you at an age of 34 became a super consciousness, something that happens very, very seldom to uh, people. Maybe in our times it only has happened to a few people. And uh, you are one of the few individuals that this has happened to. Is there any way that uh, you feel this uh, mechanism can be triggered by active uh, pursuits? I believe so. I believe that this transformation is not a haphazard affair. We have in us a mechanism implanted by nature in the human system. This mechanism rules the cerebrospinal system in our bodies. Once this mechanism is roused to activity, the cerebrospinal system works in a certain predetermined direction. A new form of energy flows in the body. A new form of consciousness develops in the brain. In my case, I always dwell in a world of light. There is light in my interior, there is light in the exterior for me. Everything I see is bathed in a luster. Whenever I turn my attention inward and close my eyes, I am bathed in light. In dreams also, I am always walking and running and moving in ethereal spaces filled with luster. I live in the same world which has been experienced by mystics of all ages and climes, a world of light, of unutterable happiness, and of intellectual illumination. 
it is in the state of consciousness that i get these hints and visions and directions and precognitions and awareness of the future events to tell me that this is the path charted for mankind and that she has digressed from this path with the result that her very existence and her evolution is threatened so what you are saying is um, that uh, different people have uh, different uh, receptivity to uh, these uh, matters that are out here in uh, the cosmic universe we are indeed like uh, receivers some people are more able to receive these uh, matters and we do know from uh, the various religions that uh, anything that has to do with creation uh, stems from a thought and if there is a universal creative thought pretty soon you will see the manifestation in a plant or in a tree or in an act that a man can do and you are also saying that this is such an enormous powerful instrument that uh, you have access to that we have lately failed to use this properly due to the fact that mankind has last couple of hundred years been too actively involved in uh, pursuits of uh, scientific matters where we have forgotten truths we have forgotten the ability and know-how to communicate with cosmic intelligence you are doing it successfully and what you are telling us is really a message that must be heard around the world how would you go about bringing this to general public awareness you are very right some minds are more responsive and more receptive to this cosmic reservoir of intelligence than others for instance geniuses it is well known and it is admitted by geniuses themselves that they receive whole chapters whole books whole ideas whole poems just as if somebody else is feeding them with that material so, so you say that uh, when a genius works that uh, it is not something that his mind sits and works and works and he's trying very very hard it's on the other hand it just comes to him and he's the instrument of the information or the, the creativeness or, certainly the original things and this is admitted by most of the geniuses themselves it is not that he does not make any effort the effort is made but his brain is so constituted that it has an easier access to this reservoir of eternal knowledge than that of others similarly we have the psychics the prophets the clairvoyants the prodigies the great artists the great musicians they all receive new ideas new flashes new music new art from this intelligent source which is behind the human mind 